Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Halloween's coming up and I recently talked about something scary. So now let's talk about something that's more creepy than scary and notorious for being so. Now I know what you might be thinking. Ugh, Mikey, stop speaking and just get to the actual discussion of whatever it is you're going to talk about. Okay, then I will. I Was a Teenage Gary is the episode where Squidward doesn't take care of Gary when Spongebob and Patrick go away for the weekend, and Spongebob becomes a snail after accidentally being injected with snail plasma. Teenage Gary? Is Spongebob a teenager? I mean, he does have a job and goes to school like most teenagers do, but he has his own place and not a lot of teenagers have their own place. What does it mean? Oh, my brain hurts. Now everything hurts. Like Scaredy Pants, this episode aired on October 28, 1999 during the Halloween season and only airs in reruns in October since it's paired up with that episode. This episode is one of the few episodes that are notorious for rarely being run on Nickelodeon. It definitely has some creepy elements to it and could be deemed as a Halloween episode, but in my opinion, it's not. Just because an episode is meant to be scary or creepy, it's not officially Halloween themed unless it actually takes place around that time. This episode is also notorious for a supposed deleted scene from the original airing in 1999 where Squidward transformed from octopus to snail. It was removed for being too gruesome. It's one of the biggest mysteries regarding any episode of the show, if not the biggest. When analyzed, it makes sense why the scene could have been made but cut from future airings. Spongebob is known for adult humor and dark scenes, and they would cut scenes that aren't appropriate for kids, and something like that feels it would absolutely fall under that category. But did it actually exist? We'll get to that later. Despite this being in Season 1, this is the most divisive episode of the season for a lot of people. I've seen some people say they love it, I've seen other people say it's more average than good, and there's a handful of people who don't really seem to like it that much. I wonder what that could mean about this episode's quality. Well, the only way to find out is to watch it. So the episode starts up and has terrifying title card music. Gary's on a hamster wheel exercising. Spongebob takes him off and plays fetch with Gary. Maybe this is why. Snails are the underwater equivalent of cats and fetching is more of a dog game. Gary takes all night to come back with the toy, and when he does, Spongebob tells him how much he loves him. Then Patrick comes in reminding Spongebob about the annual jellyfish convention in Ukulele Bottom, but Spongebob can't go because he doesn't have anybody to take care of Gary. Then Squidward comes over complaining about Spongebob leaving his underwear on his front lawn. Spongebob tries to get Squidward to watch Gary, but he refuses. When he learns that Spongebob and Patrick would be gone for three days, he changes his mind. Spongebob tells Squidward a little bit about taking care of Gary, but Squidward is too busy thinking about Spongebob and Patrick being gone for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. When I went to school, most of my three-day weekends were Saturday, Sunday, and Monday instead of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. After a few college experiences, I wish I had more three-day weekends that were Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The bus arrives, and Patrick runs out to it. Squidward pushes Spongebob out to the bus so he won't miss it, and to get rid of him. When the bus leaves, Squidward is happy they're gone and, surprise surprise, forgets about Gary. He was going to enjoy the next three days and just suntan the entire time, and we see a time card for the first time in the series. The French narrator doesn't speak what's on the card, but this would be added later. When he saw the bus return, he realized he forgot about Gary. He rushed to Spongebob's house and tried to get Gary to eat his snail food, but Gary was too weak. This leaves to Squidward stuffing it into his mouth, and I do like the scene where he swallows it. It's great. Squidward says he was still checking up on Gary, and then tries to leave, but Spongebob sees that Gary is sick and becomes upset. Later that night, the vet arrives and says that Gary needs a shot of snail plasma, but leaves because he's too squeamish to give it to Gary himself. Some vet he is. Neither Spongebob nor Squidward want to do it, but Squidward ends up giving in, but when he tries to do it, Spongebob keeps moving Gary away because he thinks Squidward was going to hurt Gary. As a result, Squidward accidentally stabs Spongebob with the syringe. Spongebob starts to get worried and Squidward says nothing is going to happen to him. Gary drinks some water and feels better right on the spot. Why doesn't he just drink the water around him? He lives underwater after all. 
SpongeBob's happy that Gary's better, and Squidward leaves telling SpongeBob nothing will happen to him. SpongeBob believes him and proceeds to get some dinner for Gary. As he prepares it, he gets an urge to eat it and ends up not leaving any for Gary. After that, he starts to walk very slowly to the bathroom mirror, and this is where things really start to get weird. SpongeBob's eyes seemingly pop out of his head, but he gains eye stalks instead. His arms and legs disappear into his body, and that body starts to reshape, and then he finally admits something is wrong with him, right as he fully transforms into a snail. Squidward is about to go to bed, but Spongebob shows up at his door, and Squidward becomes horrified when he sees Spongebob has turned into a snail, and realizes what he has done. He tries to calm down, but whenever he hears the Spongebob snail meow, he tries to board up his house, but Spongebob gets in anyway. Sponge Snail keeps following Squidward around, and Squidward keeps running back and forth on the walls and ceilings. Man, I always wanted to run on the walls and ceilings. Squidward's house jumps around as if it's on hot concrete, and flips on its side, wrecking the interior, and the snail plasma syringe gets injected in Squidward's nose, and we all know what that means. Scene changes, and Gary, Sponge Snail, and Squid Snail sing. As they sing, Patrick throws a boot, telling them to clam up. The boot hits Squid Snail, the three snails finish the song, and the episode ends. So that was I Was a Teenage Gary, and there is quite a bit to talk about. I'll start off with that deleted scene mystery. People who claim they watched the original airing either don't remember seeing the scene at all, or they do remember seeing it, but very hazily. This scene uses a wipe transition instead of a bubble transition. That may not seem like much, but if a transition like this is used, it could indicate that something was cut. Squid Snail's shell has a similar color to Squidward's robe, which could be another sign. However, I'm just going to say if it's true or not. And... It's not. Vincent Waller, one of the current crew members, has stated on Twitter that he's looked around and that the alleged scene was never made at all. Damn it! Now with that out of the way, let's discuss the actual episode. After looking at it more professionally, I have come to the conclusion that this episode isn't necessarily horrible, but it does feel like possibly the weakest episode of season 1. First off, what exactly is the plasma part of the term snail plasma? Since Spongebob was injected with it, did that actually cause him to turn into a snail? Or is it the snail plasma and snail food that causes the transformation? Spongebob was injected with the snail plasma and then ate snail food. Earlier in the episode, Squidward swallows so much snail food and then was injected later, so is it the food and the syringe, or just the syringe? The actual transformation isn't absolutely disgusting per se, but it is creepy. Gary hadn't eaten in three days, so how can just drinking water cause him to feel better instantly? Why did the Spongebob snail go to Squidward's house? Was it because he was trying to ask for help? To show that Squidward was wrong when he said Spongebob would be fine? To bother him? To say hi? Maybe that option. Although it's obvious that Spongebob and Squidward would be back to normal by the next episode, how do they get back to normal? Does it wear off? Or is there a cure or an antidote? Why does Squidward have an actual shell when in snail form, but Spongebob's shell is just his pants? How did Spongebob get the urge to try the snail food? Probably the plasma, but still. How did Spongebob leave his underwear in Squidward's front yard? This episode also seems to be a little light on jokes compared to most other season 1 episodes and feels more plot driven. However, there are jokes that absolutely hit, like Patrick making a hole in the house and bust in his shape, Squidward swallowing all the snail food at once, and my personal favorite, the WILL YOU CLAM UP line from Patrick. The ending seems a bit weird. Instead of a proper resolution, it just ends with Gary, Sponge Snail, and Squid Snail singing Blow the Man Down. This kind of thing can work, but maybe just not in this type of situation. Obviously, I still love the episode, but I can understand how some think this is not the best episode of season 1. Despite that, I almost never actually hear people complaining about this episode compared to the worst episodes from later seasons. It's either because people forget this since it only airs in October, or because of how it's from season 1, a universally loved season. Probably season 1. I still like watching it at Halloween, but it still only comes on in October and rarely airs. 
I probably feel this way about all episodes that rarely air in reruns, whether it's due to it being a holiday special, or it's a 22 minute episode that only airs during TV marathons. And while this episode may not be the most loved episode of season 1, which is fine, I appreciate how people don't overreact to this episode as they do with the not loved episodes of the modern seasons. It may feel creepy, and I don't know if that's the reason people dislike it a little, but it makes sense to have something creepy air alongside an episode that's actually Halloween related. Feel free to disagree with me if you like this episode, which is okay, I do too. But I still understand how some people think it's more average than amazing. I Was a Teenage Gary might not be the most popular episode of season 1, although I'd say it's fine, but not awful, just more average than good. While the episode might be a little light on actual jokes, and Spongebob and Squidward are still snails at the end of the episode, what really causes people to claim that this episode isn't as good as other season 1 episodes or even its sister episode? Probably because the alleged deleted scene of Squidward turning into a snail never actually existed. 